So topic five is actually called ecology. And uh, let me explain to you what ecology actually means. It is the study of the relationships between living organisms and uh, their environment. So we've talked about how there's five kingdoms of organisms. We've been talking about classifying them. Fungi, protista, bacteria, animals, and plants. But now we want to talk about how they relate to the area uh, that they're living in. So let's talk about how ecology would be organized. Well, there's a hierarchy here. And um, I'm going to start from the bottom. And we'll put little pieces together to make big pieces. Uh, so the first piece here. First piece is what we call an organism, right? And we've talked about how there are five different types of organisms, as I just said. Plant, animal, fungi, protista, and uh, bacteria. If you have a group of the same organism, that is, the same species there, and we're going to talk later on about why a species is a species, we would call that a population. So, for example, I might have a herd of zebra. That would be a population. If you have several populations put together, then that becomes a community. So we might have out in the jungle there, maybe I've got a herd of zebra and I've also got a pride of lions. And together, they would form a community because they're interacting with each other. Now that's really important. You can't just say that they're all out there in the same area. They have to be interacting. Now they are interacting. Uh, unfortunately for the zebras, though, they're interacting in a bad way. The lions are killing them. Um, now, at this point, all we've been talking about is biotic factors. Let's go ahead and just write that word down. And so biotic means living. So, so far, organism, population, and community is about living things. At the next level here, though, and the next level is ecosystem, now we're introducing abiotic factors. Now, what do I mean by abiotic factors? Let's make a list of abiotic factors. Abiotic means not living, not living. So what might be abiotic factors? Oh, rain, temperature, uh, altitude, uh, the amount of sunlight, uh, the type of soil, uh, the steepness of the area that they're living on. These are all abiotic factors that would influence how things could live there. So an ecosystem combines both biotic and abiotic. The biological cooperation of a certain region with living and non-living participants. So for example, maybe uh, it might be uh, the grassland might be uh, having uh, zebras and lions. And it might be very sunny and rainy, for example. That could be both the biotic and abiotic system. Now, when an ecosystem gets to be super duper large, we eventually call it a biome. And we're going to find out later on that there's a whole bunch of biomes. These are huge areas around the world. And they're defined by three categories, which are latitude, rainfall, and temperature. But we'll talk about those later on. So these are global systems defined by rainfall, temperature, and latitude. So for example, the jungle might be a huge biome. And finally, all of them get put together into the biosphere. That's everything all together. And fortunately for us, there's only one biosphere, and that is the planet Earth that we are living on right now. OK, let's move on here. So now that we know what the hierarchies are, uh, what's our definitions of things that we're going to be using? What are the pieces? Well, we first of all said a species. So a species is the first level there. Now, what is a species? It's a group of organisms that can interbreed and produce fertile offspring. That's really important. So, for example, a uh, lion is a species because one lion can breed with another and make little baby cub lions. A uh, Zebra is a species because they can interbreed, but a zebra and a uh, lion cannot interbreed, right? That's why they're separate species, right? Okay, so whether or not they can interbreed and make fertile offspring is what makes them a species. Habitat. The habitat is the local area that they're living with. 
So it's an environment in which the species normally lives. Now, you can take a lion and pick them up and drop them in downtown Portland, but I don't think Portland is their natural habitat, right? It's where they are suited to be living. And finally, niche. That's a really important word. A niche means the role that an organism performs in its environment. Now, don't think of it really as a job. I mean, it's not like a lion has a job. You know, it, it doesn't go to work each day. But it does have a role. And its role, for example, is to kill the zebra, to keep the population of uh, uh, zebras down. So that's a really important niche that it forms there. Okay? Finally, the competitive exclusion principle. No two species, therefore, can occupy the same niche in the same environment. Well, at least they can't do it for very, very long. So let's uh, stick on the grassland. So the lions, their niche is to control the population of zebra. Now, suppose there was another major predator that came in there. Oh, let's suppose the hyenas, right? And the hyenas came in, and they want to occupy the same niche in the same habitat as the lions. They want to use the zebras as their food source. Well, you can see that in a short time, this is not going to work. Somebody's got to be dominant, and the other guy's got to go because there's only so many zebras. So uh, chances are the lions would occupy the niche, which means that either the hyenas would have to leave or a uh, new habitat, or they would have to switch and occupy a new niche. And that is my introduction for uh, ecology.